In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we delight today for a beautiful feast of Our Lady. We make no excuses for having this great grace to celebrate for the lovely Lady. This is the feast of Our Lady of the Snows in Rome, or the dedication, as we say, of the magnificent Marian the number one basilica of Our Lady in the world, St. Mary Majors. Improbable as it is to have snowfall in August in Rome, imagine the temperatures in Rome in August. History tells us of a snowfall that seemed more impossible, namely in Rome, Italy, on August the 5th, the year was 352. Snow fell during the night in Rome. There lived in the Eternal City a noble man, John and his childless wife, who had been blessed with much of the world's goods. They chose then the Mother of God as their heir to their fortune, and at the suggestion of Pope Liberius, prayed that she might make known to them how to do this by a particular sign. In answer, the Virgin Mother, during the night of the 5th of August, appeared to John and his wife independently and also to the Holy Father, Liberius, directing them to build a church in her honor on the crown of the Esquiline Hill. And what would be the sign that John and his dear wife had requested? Snow rarely falls in Rome, but the flakes fell silently during that night blanketing the peak of the historic hill. In the morning, the news spread quickly, and crowds gathered to throng up to the hill and behold this magnificent white splendor. The snow had fallen in a particular pattern, showing the outline of the future basilica or church. When it became known that the snow was a sign from Mary, the people spontaneously added another to her long list of titles as Our Lady of the Snows. The church built there now, we know, perhaps you have visited it, is St. Mary Major. It is the focal point of devotion for many of Mary's millions and millions of children, one of the most popular churches in the globe. There, Mary has been pleased to secure various and many blessings as numerous and varied as the flakes of snow that fell that August night. The church built by John and his wife in honor of Our Lady of the Snows, restored and enlarged at various times, was known by different names through the epochs of times. The Basilica of Liberius, then it became St. Mary of the Crib. Why? Because it enshrines relics of the Christ's crib beneath the main altar. St. Mary Majors then became the last name to distinguish it from the other Roman churches dedicated to the Mother of God. Major, because this means the greatest. There's an image of Our Lady of the Snows there, which is believed to have been produced by St. Luke the Apostle. So St. Mary Majors then, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, is one of the four basilicas in which pilgrims to Rome must pray in order to gain indulgences of the Holy Year. Most fitting do we call it Mary, Our Lady of the Snows. The white blanket of that August night symbolizes Mary pure and most holy, magnificent as the driven snow. Her blessings and graces, numerous and varied as the falling snowflakes. We look to Mary to cover us then with her snow white mantle of purity. Remember this magnificence of each snowflake. If you cut each flake open like each each drop, 
it contains a different pattern. Like our souls, we are all different, but we must try to be white and pure like Our Lady. In a world covered with promiscuity, immoralities and abuse, sexual scandals, pornography, fornication, unfaithfulness in marriage, we turn to Mary, Our Lady of Purity, Snow White, not only as our perfect model for imitating her virtue purity, but to protect us from the snares of the devil of lust. Purity is a most eminent virtue then, a positive virtue which gains the grace of God for the person who lives it. It is the virtue of the beautiful and spotless soul. It elevates us to the things divine. Remember, almost 104 years ago, now Our Lady appeared at Fatima to the three innocent shepherd children, Jacinta, Francisco, and Lucia. One of the subsequent messages of Our Lady to the world at large referred to the salvation as well as the perdition of humanity. Our Lady stated in 1917 that most souls were lost to the fires of hell, principally due to the sins against the sixth and the ninth commandments. That is the sins of impurity, exterior and interior. We turn to Mary then, the true remedy for the virus of sin to help us to cultivate the spiritual arms to win this battle of purity. But we know that we are weak. We are sinners and we are very weak. Jesus Christ reminded the apostles as well as the whole world in the garden of Gethsemane with these precise words, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The principal reason for falling into any sin, but especially that of impurity, is either the lack of prayer or the very weak prayer. The Israelites were able to defeat their enemies only after Moses, perched on the top of a hill overlooking the battlefield, lifted his arms to heaven. So the message is don't play with fire, the key reason why many fall into sins of impurity is a failure to avoid the near occasions of sin. Proverbs are not lacking. It says, these proverbs, he who plays with fire will get burned, or likewise, he who walks on thin ice will fall in. And also, once again, he who walks on a slippery slope will fall. We have to use our common sense and prudence. Jesus Christ said also, some devils can only be expelled only through prayer and fasting. We are called to be like eagles to fly high into the lofty heights, but we need two spiritual wings to fly on, prayer and penance. To conquer the demands of the flesh, we must pray, pray and pray but also to learn the art of fasting and to live a life of penance. All the saints have taught us this clear lesson. One of the things to overcome also, we could speak many hours about this, is this great virtue of modesty, not just a virtue of knowing what to dress, men and women, but also remember, above all, this is an interior disposition interior disposition, modesty. Why? In the world, many say, I'm not interested if I want to dress well, if somebody is going to sin looking at me, that is their problem. But this is not Catholic, because you should do anything at all in your capacity to dress well, based on an interior disposition, and to try to stop the sin and get people to paradise. Note well this story, a noble lady who was exceedingly pious. Ask God to make known to her what displeased his divine majesty most in persons of her gender. The Lord vouchsafed in a miraculous manner to hear her. He opened her eyes in the eternal abyss, the abyss of hell. There. She saw a woman pray to cruel torments 
and in her recognized one of her dear friends, a short time deceased. The sight caused her as much astonishment as grief. The person whom she saw damned did not seem to have lived a life badly. Then that unhappy soul said to her, it is true I practice religion, but I was a slave of vanity. I was a slave of vanity. Rude by the passion to please, I was not afraid to adopt indecent fashions to attract attention. And I kindled the fire of impurity in more than one heart. Ah, if Christian women knew how much immodesty in dress displeases God. At the same moment, at the same moment, this unhappy soul was pierced by two fiery lances and plunged into a cauldron of liquid lead. This explains to avoid the vanity. Another huge opening for the devil of impurity is the capital sin of sloth, or we call it laziness. Once again, maxims we can use at our beck and call. Idleness is the workshop of the devil. Saint Bonaventure, this great Franciscan doctor said succinctly, when, work, when one is working, a devil might be there to tempt. But when you have nothing to do, a multitude of devils are there to tempt. In all times and places and circumstances, we should also control the tongue. St. James, as remember, tells us in his wonderful scripture, we should be slow to speak and quick to listen. Never should it happen that issues from our lips and pure words, suggested language, or worse yet, coarse and crude and impure jokes. Why? Because you are being made in the image and the likeness of the Lord. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ warns us that we will be judged on all of our words that issue from our very mouths. Never forget that we also receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior, on our tongues. This is what happens in baptism in the extraordinary form. The priest places salt on the tongue of the child because it is the tongue which will be the throne of the Lord in Holy Communion. Our tongues then become the throne of Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Let us speak then with such nobility. Keep constant vigilance then, especially of the eye. Stay awake and pray. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Of the greatest importance then in safeguarding the virtue of chastity, is our relation to Jesus Christ in the most Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist, we know, is tr truly and substantially the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ, the living God. If you like every Holy Communion, well received results in receiving what we can say is a spiritual heart transplant. In conclusion, then, experience shows in the lives of countless saints that it is through their great love of Jesus Christ and their filial trust and consecration and love for Mary that they can live holy lives with great purity. Saint Faustina said that she had been begging Our Lady for this gift of purity for a long time. Therefore, it was through the intercession of the lovely lady, the Blessed Virgin Mary, that Saint Faustina received and acquired this marvelous gift of chastity. Let us turn to the most pure and immaculate heart of Mary in this month of the Assumption of Our Lady and beg for purity of mind, heart, body, soul, and even purity of intention. We beg Mary today, Our Lady of the Snows, for the grace to live out this sublime beatitude that Jesus Christ taught us himself in Matthew 5. Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Let us live out purity in this life so as to contemplate the beauty of the Blessed Trinity with Our Lady and the angels and saints for all eternity. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
under the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening. Please remember to click subscribe and to hit the bell for notifications. And in this age of censorship, please consider helping support us at sensefidelium.com. Under the Donate and Support tab, there are plenty of ways to help support the work and to help grow and sustain the efforts of Census Fidelium in general. May God reward you, and thank you very much.